Hello Lilas, welcome back to my channel guys. <laughs> so I have baby Taraji, which she's a toddler, toddler Taraji and baby Austin. And Austin is there. Um, so Austin is a Haley baby. She, he's uh, painted by and rooted by Haley Armstrong. And Taraji is one of my, my painted babies. Um, <clears throat> painted by me and rooted by my rooter that I've been using for years. Um, so I did his hair last night and it's so funny because look at that hair. It's, it's beautiful actually. And it's, it's very dry. Um, I took my time. I have to say I took my time brushing that hair a little bit at a time, a little bit carefully swoop, swoop, swoop. <laughs> And um, it's bone dry, and so, and that's that's the outlook. Um, I did her hair the other night, and as well, she is her hair is bone dry as well. Um, the thing about you know trying to show these babies on camera, like you never really get the full just of what they look like. Like even I don't think in this video you can tell that her eyes are a very light brown. Um, they are hazel color. But you can't see that. Let me see if I pull the light in even more. Like they're even lighter than what is showing right there. So it's a lot of lot of play in the camera. No matter how good you try to show them. Um, so I was looking at um, Katie Lou last night, and I was I was like, you know, I was like she. It's such a beautiful baby, but on camera, she looks okay, but to me, she really don't look as good as she does in person. So it's pretty, it's pretty funny. Um, so a lot has been going on, like moving parts with my collection. So I actually curled her and Zora's hair. I was like, oh, let me wear it down. I, they got two different curl patterns though. Um, anyway, I'm all over the place. But um, I thought about selling um, Austin. Austin is the Jackson real born. Um, for those that know that follow me, I am not really a real born fan normally, but this baby was so beautifully done and I just loved it. But I can say that I absolutely love, like the head shape is like perfectly to a newborn baby, a just born baby. I love the, the, the fist, um, the sculpting of the fist, um, or whatever they do to it. I love, I love the, the, the fist. It looks so realistic, the face. And I love his feet and his legs. I'm not so excited about the bend in the real born's arms. They all have it. Um, but overall, I actually do think it is absolutely beautiful. You know, I love hands and feet. So I really love his hands and feet. And the way that he was painted um, definitely is wonderful. And um, my daughter, Gabby, had a nine-year photo shoot, nine-year-old photo shoot. And the photographer came over and she's Caucasian. And I brought Austin down for her to see. Of course, we end up playing dolls. It's so funny. But anyway, um, <laughs> she came and I let her see Austin. And when she held him, she took so many selfies with him. He just looked so perfect in her arms. Um, so, you know, that that's just, and she was like, she showed me some really nice photos of real babies. And, um, and, and it's, it's just amazing. It, everything is just like so real with him. And I thought about selling him because I don't know. I do that sometime, but I'm I'm gonna just take a pause. I got a lot of stuff going on, and sometimes when you have a lot of stuff going on, it's not the best time to make big decisions. You know what I mean? Because right now, if I just let myself go, I would sell every doll I have in my collection right now. Like everyone, well, except Jaden and Phoebe. <laughs> but I would sell. I would sell all of them. Um, so sometimes, you know, you got to take a step back and say, am I just doing this and being rash? Like, you know, just being crazy and emotional. And then, 
you know, regret it later because some of these dolls you can't get back in, especially with the prices just constantly going up and up and up. And also them just being hard to get because, you know, although a lot of, it's so many people painting, it's so many artists out here, it's also so many collectors out here and you got to be fast and, or you got to be in the know. Um, a lot of stuff with buying these dolls and I, I hear people get frustrated all the time. Um, I hear people aim frustration at me, even myself, and I'm not even a big artist. It's like, I, how do I get one of your babies or whatever? And, you know, it's kind of like I'm only one person. And I'm trying to, you know, put out a little bit more babies than I normally do, but I don't want to rush my work. But at the same time, I'm a collector, so I get to feel that too because it's like I really want a baby from this particular person, but I never can seem to get one or when it do come avail one come available, it's not the sculpt that I like or it's not the paint style that I was waiting on or the person is trying to charge too much for it. Um, because second market isn't always cheaper. Um, and certainly, like if I was to sell Austin, he would be sold at full price because I just got him. He's in immaculate condition. Um, like I haven't had him, but if two months, I don't even think it's been two months. And even so, I just don't devalue my dolls like that. I will keep them before I just, you know, give them away. Some babies are so cheap because I don't care. And I just, but no, not, not ones like that. Not the really high end ones like that. I don't, mm -mm. um, especially if I didn't paint them because I can't just easily go back and say, oh, I will just paint me another one. Um, but it is frustrating. Um, sometimes I, it's like I'm looking at a lot of these artists that have all these different kits, like silicone kits and stuff, full bodies. I've never even seen the kits. Um, uh, for example, I see like there's like uh, people painting this Marita Winters full body kit, and it's like it's only certain collectors that uh, artists that have them, which are conveniently the same artists that tend to have a lot of the rare finds that you don't even know even exist like I didn't even see these kits marketed or anything it's like how do they know about this thing um there's this thing that goes on in the community that nobody really talks about but I talk about it every now and then because I'd be a little salty about it I ain't gonna lie but where some of the sculptors only put their kits in certain artists hands and primarily it's definitely the I'm not going to even go there, but you guys will figure it out. But it's also, you know, it's just, I don't know. I think sometime, you know, if artists, sculptors are a little insecure about their work sometime or their sculpt sometime or their pouring, they are very particular about who gets them because I guess they don't want people to complain about their work or talk about it or whatever the case may be. So there's that but yeah there's there's just it's a lot you know a lot of politics in this community and it makes it kind of challenging and it does suck soak the fun out of it sometime if you let it but I found that I got to a point where it's like yeah I like that sculpt um but I'm okay that I didn't get it um I'm perfectly okay with you know going to the the sites that just allow you to buy if you got the money. Um, you know, for years I only bought in you know uh, Lillian Breville and Claire Taylor kits because they were accessible and there was no you know politic pool. You know, Lillian would sell to anybody, Claire would sell to anybody, and there's there was that. So um, you know, since then, of course, I've you know broadened my horizon because. I like to, to get a good deal and I like lower prices. So I've been exploring and, you know, now I go to, you know, other vendors out there that's not like being crazy. Um, I have had some experiences where um, I did business with particular ones and I feel like they've delayed my stuff purposely or did little spiteful things because of politics and that part really uh, is not a good feel. So I kind of like the more business setup. Um, 
you know, sites where I can just buy and, you know, my stuff get shipped to me, you know, regular time. Like I, I am really, I really went and took some time and really looked at MacPherson's website, um, and what they had to offer as far as silicone go. I was really shocked that there's a lot that I hadn't paid attention to that's out there on their website. And, um, I'm looking forward to one day, you know, trying one of their silicones and see how it is. But I like particular pores. So I'm really a big fan of Maria Land Grover's uh, silicone pour. When I love when artists will go to her, use her for pouring. Um, because I, I love, I love her silicone. I love the way it feels. So, um, I look for that. And I have not tried Chrissy pouring. Um, I see that she's pouring quite a bit for um, MacPherson's Dainty Loft or whatever. So I, I have to experience that as well because I'm kind of thinking more of going towards these websites. I do like that Bountiful Baby is offering kits. However, I'm not a fan of silicone without with without open mouths and I don't I'm not opposed to learning how to do it but I just feel like I signed up for painting not sculpting or technical stuff and you know opening mouths is not a form of art um in my opinion that is very technical it is you know it's not art so it doesn't make you a good or bad artist if you can open a mouth. I see people that can open mouths, put tongues in it, and the babies look like crap painting-wise. So, you know, for someone to say, oh, good artists will know how to open a mouth, kiss my grits. Um, <laughs> I just, I just, I can't take some of these people serious these days. Um, I just don't. I, I don't want to deal with that. So that's that's my other dilemma with some of the sites is that they don't open mouths. And it makes me wonder, like, I guess the pouring, maybe it's the pouring part that's so complex for them. And so I can't speak to that because at first I'm like, why doesn't the sculptor just sculpt them? But I guess too, like for real borns, they're just scanning, they're not sculpting and they're not so I don't know, it's like, you know, it's it's like when people keep making the same faces over and over again. It's like, if you can sculpt, why not sculpt something different, something fresh? Um, a lot of the sculptors out here, like Bonnie Brown, Claire Taylor, um, uh, Audrey Stoetti, you know, Oga Ara, people like that. Um, uh, Laura Tudor Ross, they, they, they have the ability to sculpt something different for us. Now, Laura Tudor Ross do tend to use reuse her limbs a lot, and I think that has something to do more with cost than, you know, wanting to do skill or whatever. And plus, she likes to keep her dolls pretty affordable, as well. So, you know, but you know, when when wanted to, she can do a different face or something like that. But I don't know. I just you know, some people I've been in this hobby in this community for you know maybe 10 11 12 years and some people are still working off the same face they just tweak in the mouth the nose the eyes here or there and it just kind of looked like the same doll over and over again smaller bigger in between and it's just I don't know it's boring for me um so anyway I I don't know I'm not all over the place but I don't know. I just I I find myself in a place where I don't know where I fit in anymore. Kind of I've been enjoying my dolls at my collection off camera a lot. I sat downstairs, watched TV with my grandfather last night and dressed Taraji and did her hair and he was cracking up laughing because he kept saying how real she looked and so um I spent time doing Austin hair last night. I held, you know, um Katie Lou, and then I have my other little baby, Ming Lee, which I decided to leave her name, Ming Lee. And like, so I've been playing with my babies more off camera. So, hold on, I think my, my grandpa 
is setting off the alarm. Oh God, I don't even. 